Tervetuloa sitten, se on vuosi 2011 ja Helsingin Suvilahti Tuska-festivaali. Mä tulin tänne Sonjan kanssa juontamaan. Sonja ei ole ikinä, ikinä käynyt Tuskassa. Ei, olen ensimmäistä kertaa Tuskassa. Tähän asti hyvältä vaikuttaa, kieltämättä vähän jännittää, mutta en mä tiedä. Mitä sä luulet? Tuleeko mulla joku heavy-usko nyt? Ehkä mä, mä hylkään mun hipsteryyden ja indien paskat ja nautin Suvilahdesta nyt tuskassa enkä flowssa. En oo menossa flowhun tänä vuonna, vaan olen tuskassa ja wow. nautin siitä. Meillä on ihan loistavia haastatteluita. Tulossa meillä on muun muassa Morbid Angel, Arts Enemy ja Devin Townsend Project. Wow! Jopa minä tiedän, että se on kova. Se on kova. Mun lähtee ääni jo tässä vaiheessa. Mä oon huutanut ihan liikaa täällä. Sä oot niin paljon huutanut. Niin, no Mutta ei siinä ketään. Lähdetään katsoa, mitä tekee 2011 uudessa paikassa Suvilahdessa ensimmäistä kertaa. Mää! Eli Tuska 2011 Backerilta löytyy Moby Dangelin laulaja uh, David Vincent. Hello. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Just fine. And how are you doing this hot afternoon? Yeah, exactly. Hot afternoon. You wouldn't expect uh, that Helsinki would be this warm, but it's going to be a great day and we're going to have a great show and we're looking forward to it. Last time you guys were here, it was in 2008, if I remember correctly, and it was also a Tuska festival. Now, what kind of memories do you have of the last time in Finland? You know, I wish I had more memories. Um, I was only in the country of Finland for a total of 18 hours. And uh, much of that was spent sleeping because we had, uh, you know, these summer festivals sometimes, the uh, it's like every day but in a different country, so you have to wake up early and get on the plane and, and fly to fly and play and then hurry up and leave because the next morning you have to fly and play again. And, uh, you know, it's a little different than when we're doing our own tours, you know, and we have a bus and you're able to sleep a lot more, so. Sleep is uh, sleep is not the enemy. <laughs> okay, now considering that there's uh, quite a lot of heat here to, tonight in Helsinki, uh, and I remember last time you were here, you you performed in this PVC kind of shirt with the red pentagram on it. Uh, now, do you still have it, and how hot is that? <laughs> well, it's pretty warm. It doesn't breathe. Um, uh, I, I don't. I mean, I, I I change my costumes from time to time. But uh, that, yeah, there was. Uh, it's pretty hot. I used. I sweat a lot. Yeah. How important is the image for you? Well, it's not. A, I mean, the image is. It's. It's. Uh, it's the inside. Uh, my, my outside is just an expression of my inside. So I don't know how important is that. I don't know. It's. It's as important as anyone wants to make it. Now let's talk briefly about the new album, of course. And uh, now, as you have obviously uh, noticed, people have had very diverse opinions about it. Uh, were you aware when you were doing this album that it was going to be such a watershed among the fans? Well, I mean, there's there's definitely some extreme. It's it's a very extreme record, and it's and it's and uh, it's getting a lot of uh, extreme responses. So it's a good thing. Did the track too extreme? Did it, did it live up to its name? Uh, well, indeed, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it seems to be too extreme for a lot of people, which is again, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. You gotta shake up the things every once in a while. Well, I like to uh, I like to push the boundaries of music. I think extreme music has no boundaries. We'll decide what's what is too extreme and what's not. Now, of course, since there are industrial uh, kind of tracks on the album, and uh, now is there any possibility of hearing those live? Um, we're we're still working um, to put you know more new stuff in the set. Um, you, you know, some of the stuff it does take a, a bit more work, but uh, yeah. we like it. Tim Young is uh, playing drums for you tonight, uh, and for, well, pretty much, pretty much for for the whole year, I'm guessing. Uh, now, how has he fitted into the Moby Dangel unit? Well, he's a he's a very talented player, and um, it really starts there. I mean, the guy's really good drummer. Uh, he did an excellent job on the record, and um, you know, I'm just I'm really excited. You know, he's a he's a good guy. Now, of course, I got to ask you, uh, Pete Sandoval. Uh, do you have any information or you know do you know when he's coming back to the Moby Dangel family? Well, I wish I had an answer for that. His doctor will decide, I think, when uh, when he's when he's able to do that. 
So it could be like next year, or do you think that it's well, going to be all like of the touring for this record um, is going to be Tim, and then we'll reassess, you know, what what the next step is, you know. I'm honestly, I'm I'm really focused on on a couple of things right now. I mean, Pete, yes, Pete, Pete is a uh, Pete's a good friend, and we all wish him well. I mean, we want him to to recover, but this is, you know, some of these things take a long time. That's I think I think that's pretty much everything we have to ask for you now. So thank you very much and have a good good show tonight in Tuska. Thank you, buddy. Sitting here with uh, Chris from Arch Enemy. How are you, man? I'm doing very good. The weather's nice, and we just played a good show. Yeah, you played uh, on the main stage, and it was almost like uh, 35 degrees or something. How does that affect your playing? So hot. The guitar stayed in tune, uh, <laughs> but now it was good. It sounded good on stage, and the crowd were getting into it. And it's a good show. Success. It's, it's good because you're warmed up. You don't have to warm up that much before you play. You're kind of already loose, you know. Your brother is actually playing uh, another gig after this. Uh, how do you think he'll manage? I don't know. He's in a tent, so uh, I guess me and Michael, we got kind of fair skin. Kind of, We're half British, so we got the English complexion, so we're sensitive to the sun. Let's talk about a bit about your new album, The Chaos Legions. Uh, it took a while. Your last yeah. album came out uh, 2007 and now it's 2011. Yeah, yeah. What happened? Uh, well, we just did a whole bunch of touring, working on the road, you know, and uh, we had decided to do this uh, uh, album of our old, re-recording our old songs, Root of All Evil, with Angela. That was something that we just wanted to do and that what the fans requested. So we just we just went ahead and did that. So that that explains the long break between original studio albums. Uh, it actually, uh, I heard it took a while, uh, like four months to uh, do the new album. It was your longest recording. What, uh, yeah. how come? We got a bit delayed. We had, we were recording uh, in one place and the producer kind of got burned out and couldn't finish the mix. So we had to uh, give it to another guy, Andy Sneep in England to, to finish the mix. So it was kind of prolonged process. And it was over Christmas and then uh, New Year too, so we took a, took a little break there in the middle. This is your last album uh, for Century Media. What's coming next? We're going to record some shows during the tours next year and we're going to release a little live DVD at the end of next year. Maybe just do a separate deal for that. But uh, the long-term new record deal, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Is there still a possibility to continue with Century Media? Yeah, there's a possibility. We'll see. We'll see what the best offer is. How is the songwriting process? Are you uh, constantly writing, or is it like uh, after a tour you're all going to the same place and write songs, yeah. or are you constantly writing? We, we record little bits and pieces here and there on the road. Sure, like somebody will uh, be warming up, you know, and like I'll be warming up, and Michael says, "Hey, that, that's a cool riff. What's that? You know, like something." We just record it on an iPhone or whatever, and then. Uh, but it's good to have a deadline, you know. So uh, when when we do want to make an album, we set a deadline, and then we just write every day. And uh, every day we record the rehearsals, then we listen to them in the evening, and then the next day we have ideas for arrangements and stuff. So so it, it's cool. We all know what the Arch Enemy sound should be like, so it's pretty intuitive. We don't have to have a whole lot of arguments about is this good or bad, is this Arch Enemy. Since you all, uh, all are writing like all the time, is there any possibility that you're gonna release like an, a B-side al album or something rarities uh, or something like that? Well, we are actually gonna release some uh, an EP or something because there was a few tracks that didn't make it to the album because you know it got too long. So we have a few covers and. Uh, and one original that's going to be released, so that's going to be cool. You're also uh, self-managed, you don't have any managers. Uh, what are the pros and cons with that? It's just pros, I mean, we had a manager for a while and we got the contacts and now we don't need a man that kind of a manager. Angela is our manager, so 
it works out great. We don't feel like we're being controlled by anyone, you know. So I mean, we had a we had like a, we had this big management for a while, sanctuary management, Iron Maiden, and they helped us in a way to get uh, big shows. We got to open up for Iron Maiden, for example, a few times. But uh, also, there was a lot of uh, stuff going on behind, like. We didn't really know what was going on with the finances. It was strange, like we'd play in front of 300 people in Germany and then 3,000 people in Japan and we'd still get the same kind of money, you know, not very much, so it's kind of, a, it's classic uh, musician scenario, like kind of being misled. It must be uh, kind of freeing to be able to do all the major decisions yourself. Yeah, we work with a few agents in Europe, uh, one agent in Europe and one in the US and uh, they help us out but otherwise Angela does mostly the bookings but if something gets too much hard work she hands it over to uh, an agent. Where do you see Arch Enemy in like uh, 10 years? I don't know if it will be going for 10 years. Well, let's say five. Five? <laughs> I don't know we're just gonna keep doing it as long as we enjoy it you know I mean uh, we got next year booked up and uh, we're just gonna take it you know uh, album by album. So, but I think somewhere down the line we're going to take a break, a longer break, maybe six months a year, you know, because we've been working non-stop touring for the last five years, so. All right, uh, I'm thanking you, Chris, and uh, I have to say I really loved your new album, Chaos Legions, thank so uh, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Mitä me nyt tehdään? Mennä vähän kyselemään. Mä haluan tietää ihmisiltä, että onko ne mieluummin täällä vai olisiko ne Kaisaniemessä? Hyvä. Tehän se. Kaisaniemi vai Suvilahti? Kaisaniemi. Miksi? Paremmille mestoille. Kaisaniemi. Miksi? Siellä oli enemmän fiilistä. Tää on tämmönen kivi, kivi aukio. Ehdottomasti Suvilahti. No sen takia, että täällä on niinku jengi hajautuu tänään. Kaisaniemessä jengi on pakkautunut sinne nurtsille. Täällä jengi miksaa. Onko se ikävä Kaisaniemi? Ei ole, ei todellakaan ikävä. Homma toimii täällä ja niinku kaikki on, Myönnetään! Kaikki on hyvin paitsi lämmintä kaljaa myyä täällä, mikä on niinku anta, anteeksi antamatonta. Kaisaniemi. Siellä on enemmän metsää. Kaisaniemi ehdottomasti. Sen takia, koska se on keskustassa. Suvilahti ehdottomasti. Tää on ihan helvetin makempi, paljon makempi mesta. Kyllä se Kaisaniemi ehkä on vähän parempi. Tää on vaan liian teollinen alue. Kyllä se Kaisaniemi on parempi. Kaisaniemi olisi ollut parempi. Siellä olisi ollut puita ja varjoa vähän enemmän. Oletko samaa mieltä? Kyllä, olemme keskustelleet tästä monien ihmisten kanssa ja kaikki oli kyllä samaa mieltä. Musta kasvaa tuntuu, että se on yleinen ilmapiiri täällä. Kaisaniemi! Tuska 2011, pöydästä löytyy Martin Hawks from, uh, from Mesuga. Good, good evening, sir. Uh, good evening. You guys played in the sunlight on Sunday, so I, I saw the show and Jens was complaining that, you know, it's, it's way too early. So how did, how did it feel, feel for you? Uh, we've been doing this for quite some time, so we've been up on those stages. I mean, we played, we played basically this type of thing every day on the Ozfest in 2002 for 10 weeks in yeah. the States. And it was way hotter and way worse in every respect. So this was just fine, man. You know, like preferably, you know, if you, if you can choose, you, you know, you'd want to go on at like 11 or 10 or something. But on the other hand, you know, it was a good show. We had fun. The crowd was good. So since from the audience perspective, uh, your music is not easy to headbang to. Is it fun to watch from off the stage people trying to, you know, find the one? Yeah, it's it's. It's not that difficult, but still, <laughs> some people are thrown off by it. But I'm I'm amazed at the, you know, how many actually, you know, like all the way through. But some crowds, some crowds sometimes, like if you're doing a festival where you normally don't do a festival and you haven't, you know, like maybe the first time in an area and people, you know, you're not that big. Yeah. Then you can see like, okay, some parts it's like, all right, all right, and yeah, then it's like. Way. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's kind of funny sometimes, but today was good. Yeah, it's been uh, three years since Obzen. So what's going on in the Mesuga camp at the moment? Are you guys... Uh, I, I heard that you have done one track for the new album at the moment, but what's the status of the new album? Well, we're doing... It's not a major difference, but we're doing things a little bit differently as yeah. far as the recording and writing approach. Um, instead of 
sitting around making those demos and eventually have like pretty much 12 songs that are more or less finished and everybody starts to like adjust to each other's material and arrange and whatever and then learn them and then play them. Yeah. We're like, okay, this track actually feels like everybody's happy with it. Yeah. This is the way we're gonna do it. And it's probably gonna be on the album. So let's record it. So we did that with one song and um, we're doing it with another right now. And I'm finishing up the last touches on a third song and we got material for a lot yeah but to boil it down to an actual album is going to take some time but it's so that that's what we're doing right now writing recording and playing live but coming out of this festival period like on the like 12th of august or something yeah. we're not going to play for a little while so then we're going to actually really focus like the whole of september and half of august is probably going to be just studio work yeah so we're getting there but it looks you know, it's not going to come out this year. Yeah. But it looks like springtime next year or something like that. E even though we don't have, like, you know, defined a lot of tracks yet, the overall feeling of uh, the vibe, if you want, yeah. the atmosphere of what's coming out, I'm pretty fond of because it's we we we're really excited about where it's about to go. Yeah. Have you heard of that the end? Yeah. Well, I didn't hear of it from the internet. I actually heard it in an interview because I think it was. Metal Hammer or something from yeah. the UK called me up and asked me about how we felt about the Gent movement yeah. and what it was about and whatever. And since I have never heard of it, yeah. I was like, yeah, well, I don't know. And he told me what it was. So now I know. And and um, uh, I've been asked that question a bunch. So, okay. you know, it, it's all right. <laughs> no, no, that's all right. That's all right. I, I understand where it's coming from. Yeah. But to us, I'm, I keep saying it, it's a tremendous honor I guess to be inspiring people you know like because you know every time you're inspired by something that means an awful lot to you yeah. when, when you when something catches your imagination that way it's a, it's tremendously important to grow like as far as you know being a creative person or what yeah. the fuck ever you know whatever you want to call it so if you can do that to other people hey fucking great you know? yeah. but I, <laughs> I don't understand what defines the gent movement still because I've only heard Tesseract and uh, now, uh, Axel, speaking of influences, uh, what, are th what are the things that get you excited these days? Mainly stuff that I already listen to, you know, yeah. but something I've been listening a lot to now is like this electronic uh, artist, uh, female like pop, electronica singer, Imo Imogen Heap. Oh yeah, I know. Uh, and uh, she's just, yeah. she's <laughs> amazing. Because yeah. it's, you know, it's the type of music I would really not like. I, I, I don't define genres, I just listen to whatever yeah. is cool. I don't give a crap. I don't care what people think, you know. If yeah. I th think some, if I hear a hip hop act and I think, oh, this is fucking groovy, then I like it. Yeah. That's the end of the story. I don't care about anything else. Yeah. But when I heard her, it was just like, <sighs> she's <laughs> not only musical, she's got everything. She's like, it's, it's when overly produced electronic music that shouldn't really do it for me really does the trick. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for this, and have a great touring throughout the summer. Thanks, thanks, man. Kitos. Kitos.